teach again. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
first reading of whatever just the sixth Sunday of Easter. For for us in the 16th chapter of Acts, verses 9 to 15, starting with the ninth verse. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So, setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We made in this city some days, and on the Sabbath day, he went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after, she was baptized, and her household as well. She urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Epistle reading for us this day, or for us in the 21st chapter of Revelation, verses 9 to 14, and also verses 21 to 27, starting with the 9th verse. <laughs> then came one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls, full of the seven last plagues, and spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great high mountain, and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, transparent as glass. And, no, and I saw no temple in the city, for his temple is the Lord God Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And its gates will never be shut by day. There will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, 
nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is the Word of the Lord.
set for today's meditation comes to us from the gospel lesson. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. Pursue these words spoken by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and penned by St. John the Blessed Apostle of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Divine to be, this word Jason is God's peace. God's peace is way cool. God's peace is awesome. And it comes from our God. It's his peace. He can give it to you, anybody he wants to. In his wisdom, he has decided to give it to you and to me. The baptized, the faithful, and those whose names are already written in the book of life, even for all of eternity. God's peace is unique and distinct, and it's separate from the peace of the fallen and broken world. The fallen and broken world also offers its peace, but its peace is only momentary and temporary. Based on those things that are passing by, it comes from the dirt and dust of the ground, we return to the dirt and dust of the ground, and will be fried up forever when Jesus comes back on judgment. But our God's peace is different than that. It comes from God himself. It comes from our God who is steadfast and faithful, whose mercies are new every morning. So his peace is rock solid. His peace is divine. His peace is eternal. His peace is the peace that passes all human understanding. God's peace is awesome. In the death of the day, the Holy Spirit reminds you and me that our God has called and chosen you and me to work in his vineyard, in his kingdom. And it's his vineyard, it's his kingdom. So he decides who does what work, when and where and how. He assigns us our task as his servants, to assigning us our vocation and our offices. Christian husband, Christian wife, Christian father, Christian mother, Christian son, Christian daughter. As you and I execute the duties and responsibilities of our vocation, the duties and responsibilities of our offices. His love is reflected through our thoughts and our words and our actions. This is how our God would have us be fulfilled and satisfied and complete in his vineyard and his kingdom. This is how our God would have us love and serve our neighbor. And as we love and serve our neighbor, that in turn also loving and serving our God. Because our God hides behind the mask of our neighbor. It is no accident that you and I live in the United States of America. It is no accident that you and I are here in this time and space and place. Where you are is where God wants you be. And rest assured, if he wants you in a different place in his vineyard and kingdom, he will let you know. He will slam and lock doors. He will slam and lock windows. Leaving for you only one road, only one path, only one avenue. To go where he wants you to go, to be where he wants you to be, so his word and will can be done through you. And he promises to remain by your side and my side. To 
for today, we find St. Paul, the blessed apostle. He was an apostle. He was able to receive direct revelations from our God in dreams and visions. And one night he had a dream. One night he had a vision. There was a man standing there from Macedonia, and he said to the Apostle Paul, come over here and help us. So St. Paul, the blessed apostle, he got together his posse, he got together his dream dream, he got together his crew, and off they went to Macedonia. And they were led to a town called Philippi. And it was the Sabbath. And they heard that on the Sabbath, down by the river, was a place of prayer. And so St. Paul, the blessed apostle, because he was also an ordained pastor, went down by the riverside and led the divine service and proclaimed the gospel to the poor. And there was a woman by the name of Lydia from Thyatira, a seller of purple, a high-end businesswoman, a CEO who was extremely successful. She could play with the big boys. She knew how to make a buck. She knew what business was like. She knew when to make the tweaks and the changes and what tweaks and changes had to be made along the line. She also was aware of what was important and had to remain and be. And there she was with all of her household and all the grandmas and grandmas and all the sons and daughters and all her sons and daughters and all the slaves and all the servants. And they all heard the blessed apostle proclaim the good news, the gospel. And the Holy Spirit planted the seeds of faith in their heart. Because faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God. And now all of them, having received faith, were baptized. With all of that, they now receive God's peace, which was beyond all human understanding. So too it is the Lord who has called and chosen you and me to be his people at the baptism of John. To baptize the faithful bride of Christ, those whose names are written in the book of life in paradise, even for all of eternity. Those who would give receive the peace of God, which was beyond all human understanding. But there are some stumbling blocks along the way. The biggest is our own sinful flesh. Our God comes to you and me speaking through the word. He tells you and me, I want you to go over there, and I want you to do that thing. But that is awkward, and that is really uncomfortable. So we decide to call a Jonah, and not go to Nineveh, and proclaim the gospel to the Gentiles so they could be saved. We decide to go a different direction, and do a different thing. And then there is the old evil foe. The old evil foe is well aware of the fact that the Almighty has given to you and me words and promises as his servants and his people. He will lead us. He will guide us. He will watch over us and take care of us and provide for us. So the old evil foe waits until you and I are up to our ears in frustration and despair in trials and tribulations and troubles. He comes into your life and my life and he whispers into our ear to create all sorts of doubts and fears. Hey you, Joe Christian, you know all the words and promises of God, they're for the other Christians, but no, they're not for you. You're not good enough. You are unworthy because you are a sinner. Your God does not love you. He is not going to lead you and guide you and watch over you and take care of you. You are no 
nothing but dust in the wind. You are nothing but a number. And as the old evil Paul whispers in our ear, he fills our hearts with doubts and tears. We forget all about our God. We forget all about his words and promises. And his peace goes flying right out of the window. Every one of us has a sinful flesh. Every one of us attacked by the old evil foe 24 7. Every one of us falls short. So we look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who does not fall short. For all the times we have not followed God's word, He does. For all the times we have not done His will, Jesus does. He is the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace that has come down from above and from the outside. To destroy the wall of energy that exists between us and our God because of our sin. He is the Prince of Peace who brings about peace, being the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, according to the epistle lesson this morning. The Lamb of God who offered himself up as the acceptable sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice giving up all he had, all of his life, all of his body, all of his blood, to conquer all of sin, all of Satan, all of death, so you and I can have life and forgiveness and salvation. One of the last things he said as he died by the cross was, Otolios, it is done. It is finished. Nothing else has to be said. Nothing else has to be done. No extra work has to be done because Jesus has done it all in his life, in his death, in his resurrection. So you and I can be at peace with God. So you and I can be at peace with ourselves. So you and I can be at peace with our neighbor. You and I have the awesome God, the wakeful God, he comes to us and he gives to us his peace in many and various ways. One of the most important ways is through forgiveness of sins. So here we are in the New Jerusalem. Here we are at the Holy Mountain of God. Here we are in the city of God, where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ comes from down from above and from the outside and allow us to partake of forgiveness of sins through confession and his holy absolution, through the blessed sacrament of holy communion, through his baptism where he called us and chose us to be his people, through hearing God's word in the law and the gospel. And as you and I partake of forgiveness of sins, the Holy Spirit reminds us that you and I are the royal priests and believers. Our God would have us offer up to him proper and appropriate sacrificial offerings. And the most important is sin. All of our sins. All the sins committed against us. As you and I partake of forgiveness of sins, we put all those sins into a great big grocery bag and give them to Jesus and say, Here, Jesus, you're the Prince of Peace. You're the Lamb of God. All these belong to you. I don't need them. I don't want them. You take them. And we let go. And we let God. And Jesus takes all those sins and puts them upon his shoulders. And he brings them to the cross. So when he dies, they all die with him. All of them. All the big ones, all the little ones, all the other ones in between, no longer exist. They are gone. You are released from them, and they are released from you, as far as the east is from the west, even for all of eternity. And Jesus turns to you and says, you are forgiven. Depart in my peace. The peace of God that passes all human understanding. So too, our God gives to us his peace in prayer. In the Gospel of pray, we find Jesus talking to his disciples about prayer. He 
says, go to the Heavenly Father and ask anything in my name and you will receive it. And you will. Always according to his word and his will and his way. He reminds you and me that you and I are now children of the Heavenly Father. Dear children of a loving Heavenly Father, because you and I have faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior and Redeemer. And he has an awesome kind of love called agape. No prerequisites, no positions, no strings attached. So you and I have a relationship with God the Father, and he has a relationship with us. He is the loving Heavenly Father. You and I are his children. So every day he expects to have a dialogue and a conversation with you and with me and us with him. Every day he expects us to be in the Word. Because every day he's got something important to say to you and me for that day. And every day he expects us to go to him in prayer as his dear children. To a loving Heavenly Father, He wants everything. He wants it all. All of your hopes, all of your dreams, all of your aspirations, all of your objectives, all of your goals, all those things that you were thankful for, all of your doubts, all of your fears, all of your trials, all of your tribulations, all of your troubles, all of your worries, and all of your cares. He wants it all. And he wants you to put it in another grocery bag and then give it to him. All to him. more power 
cool, awesome God. Our way cool, awesome God that you and I can always trust in and depend upon and count on no matter what. Today, tomorrow, or all of you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God and the past of human understanding may it bless you and your faith and life everlasting. Amen. And now let us stand and sing the three.
and we will at the same time and a gathering of the face of the earth, thus proclaiming your goodness and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Your hand, the Lord, will be